I'm going with the subject experimental techniques. Still now we have discussed many type of pumps that is the oil seal, rotary vein pump, turbo molecular pump, sorption pump etc. and such a many type of high vacuum pumps. Today we can discuss the iron pump. That section that is the iron pump. It operates on the basis of maintaining a lower gas density within themselves than in the environment they are pumping. Net gas migrates into the pump due to the random motion of the molecules under molecular flow conditions. The few molecules escape and are either displaced or captured depending on the type. If it is displacement type, the molecules of the gas moves through it to atmosphere. And the iron pump stores or captures the molecules. In vacuum devices, the pressure decreases with an electric discharge. And this decrease in pressure is due to the certain gases reacting with the cathode and are deposited on the walls as solid particles. The selection of cathode is important. And the sputter ion pump or get ion getter pump. If the gas molecules undergo ionization and cause sputtering of the gettering agent, it is a sputter ion pump. And this material chemically reacts with the active gases to form stable compounds and that are deposited on the walls of the pump. The getter and here which is used as titanium is provided initially by a plate or electrode of the material. Then it is sputtered away by the gas ions which are formed under the influence of high voltage. The high voltage range which used here is 3000 to 7000 volt DC. When the gas molecules enters a field of high speed electrons and some are subjected to collisions. In this collision process a molecule lost one or more electrons and get positive charge. The iron is accelerated into titanium cathode under influence of a strong electric fluid field. And the titanium is reactive and, the, and it chemically unites with the active gases. And thus the compounds are accumulated on the surface of pump elements or on the pump wall. Now we can consider the case of active and non-reactive gases. In case of active gases, examples are oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and water. And in case of non-reactive gases, example helium, neon, argon, krypton and xenon, there occurs the iron burial. Next, we can discuss the topic sputter ion pump. It is the simplest form, the pending cell, which is conceived as a cold cathode vacuum cage, which can be discussed in the next topics. It uses as a pump. And there are diode pump and triode pump. We can discuss first the diode pump. This pump consists of a central anode unit made of stainless steel. And this, this is the anode cell. This anode cell can either be a short section which has opened at both ends like a unit of a crate. That is here it have two open ends. Each ends are placed with a plate of titanium metal and is electrically connected to ground and forms cathode. That is, it is connected to titanium cathode on both ends. The diode pump is packed in a suitable high vacuum container and the unit cell becomes a pump 
with a speed of a liter per second. And here shows an array with more cells. Such a cells can be made to get higher speed pump. That is many cathode anode contributions are placed here. These are the anode structure and both ends of the anode is placed with a cathode plate. And these cathode plates are connected to a ground to act it as a cathode. This is the figure which represents a sputter iron pump to get a higher speed pump. That is in this an array of more cells can be made together. Next is anode cell structure. It contains a cloud of high energy electrodes constrained by the magnetic field. The field causes electrons to move in oscillating spiral paths and thus increases chances of striking gas molecules and creates positive ions. These ions are accelerated by positive anode voltage smash into titanium cathode plates which results the positive ions can be buried in the cathode or get reflected to the buried elsewhere. In the second case, the impact can result in the removal of titanium atoms by sputtering. The sputtered titanium is deposited on the internal surfaces of pump and it reacts with the absorbed, absorbed active gases to form stirred compounds. The iron should maintain a supply of getting material. So, the iron pump is self-regulating during a particular period. It sputters much ghetto materials as per need at that particular pressure. At low pressures, the cathode plates are not wasted and the electric power is conserved. Some noble gases are pumped as a result of ionized. They are buried in cathodes by the force of accelerating voltage. Till now, we have discussed the diode pump. Now we can discuss the triode pump. It is shown in the figure. Cathode is at negative potential. Ions cannot be buried. Unsputtering of previously buried gases is eliminated. So the gases either react with or are buried by sputtered film on the walls of the pump. Collector is the metallic pump envelope. Cathode consists of multiple strip of titanium held at minus 5 kilo volt. The anode array is made of stainless steel and is at the ground potential. That is, this is the anode which is made to be ground potential and this is cathode and this also cathode which are made at a potential of minus 5 kV. And this is the collector pump envelope, which is the metallic in properties. And more about the triode pump. The ions are produced by energetic electrons, which are electrostatically trapped in each cell. The electrons are injected with into the cell, each cell, with insufficient energy to escape through the grid. The electrons have enough angular momentum to travel directly to the anode. Thus, an injected electron spirals about the anode until an ionizing calculation occurs. By small electric current, a large ionization can be produced. No expensive or massive magnets are required to provide electric confinement. The ionization is without the arc discharge. We can study what is the arc discharge in the next topic. Can achieve high pumping speed than electrostatic pump with the same diameter and anode voltages. In each cell, the positive electrodes are accelerated away from the positive central anode. 
the ions passing through the grid are then post accelerated by a bias between voltage between the grid and pump housing pump housing means cathode which assures that all ions acquire sufficient energy to be buried in the titanium covered cathode its important advantage is it results in higher ion pumping speeds with correspondingly lower ultimate pressures than which are possible with the diode type electrostatic pumps of same size the previously pumped gas is covered over deeper end rather than being exposed and the sputtered off as as in sputter ion pumps this sputter ion pump is operated in conjunction with a roughing pump which can be a two stage mechanical rotary pump a sorption pump or a combination of both the roughing pressures below 5 into 10 raised to 3 tau and also the required roughing pressure have been achieved the sputter ion pump is started at this pressure a large power will be dissipated and the pump warms up causing previously trapped gases to escape in quantities depending on the condition of pump the roughing pump and the sputter ion pump are operated in parallel until the system pressure begins to fall it is better that a liquid nitrogen cooled sorption pump is used as the roughing pump there is no pumping fluid in the ion pump there is no corresponding contamination by the vapors of the fluid that is an advantage the consequently a second reason for using a sorption pump rather than a rotary pump as the roughing pump is not a waste the above advantage by introducing rotary oil vapor contamination the pressure falls below above 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 torr the power dissipation in the pump decreases and the system pressure starts falling rapidly the substances pumping by the chemical adsorption and reactions are called getters the metals in the form of thin film evaporated into the wall of the container acts as getter the getter pumps or chemisorption pumps have the following two advantages the first one is the pump is clean and there is no pump fluid vapor which may enter the system high pumping speed can be obtained by depositing the adsorbing layer on the wall of the vacuum vessel itself in overall the titanium is most expensive extensively used getter zirconium tantalum molybdenum are also used in ultra high vacuum certain getters selectively adsorb gases for example an evaporated rhodium film adsorbs h2 carbon monoxide and oxygen and simple hydrocarbons but does not adsorb nitrogen and the next is getter ion pump in this pumps the gas is ionized and the ions are driven toward an auxiliary pump which is generally a sorption pump like getter pump the ions are captured by metal surfaces such as titanium which also pump by sorption these pumps are called ion sorption or getter ion pumps the electrons which are needed to ionize the atoms are generally produced by a hot filament these pumps are most suitable to retain vacuum in the systems while unattended if an ion sorption pump stops due to a power failure only a amount of gas may be re-emitted into the system whereas if a diffusion pump ceases operating large quantities of gas enter into the system These are all about the sputter ion pump and getter ion pump and moreover about the ion pump. Thank you. Now we have completed the high vacuum pumps and the next day onwards we can discuss the vacuum gauges. Thank you.